Took the car for a test drive today since it's been starting good and had clean fuel and, and the filter's looking good. I could get a couple hundred yards down the road and then it would sputter and quit. And then if I let it sit just for a second, restart it, it would light back up. And then I found if I kept it at about a thousand RPM or less, I could limp it back home. So I'm guessing we've probably got some stuff in the carburetor that's probably plugging the jets when I get high fuel flow. And if I go slow enough with low flow, it, the fuel sneaks by. So I'm going to pull the AFB. I've got extra gaskets. I've got all kinds of AFB parts. So I'm going to pull it apart, clean it, get all the vents and jets clean, put her back on, see if that helps um, get it to go above idle going down the road. Because I don't think it's the fuel pump because I don't think it can shut things down that fast. Uh, and then restart that fast. It's got to have fuel in the carburetor. So I'm going to pull the carburetor and we'll get that up on the bench. Got the carburetor off and just identifying the intake manifold. It is the four barrel with the slots, which I think is correct for the Avani powered cars. So looks like we have the right parts on this, which is nice. And then we've got the carb over here. Got the original factory ID plate on it for an Avani. And she's looking a little just dirty, but nothing wrong with that. PCV valve in the back. Correct choke. So we're just going to clean this bad boy up. Maybe throw some fresh gaskets on it. Make sure all the vents are clean. Make sure everything's working properly. And we'll put her back on. Hopefully that'll take care of this stalling problem. Getting her sprayed down with some carb cleaner. Man, a lot of crud's just coming right off. It's going to make my job a whole lot easier. So we'll let that sit for a minute. We'll start scrubbing some of it. Let's see what we got. Well, that's a nice step. Get all that heavy crud off, and now we can actually start working with this thing. I'm always amazed at how much stuff just pours right off. I and mean, you keep spraying it with the carb cleaner, and it just keeps running off. But this gets us going, so now we'll start taking it apart, see what we got going on inside. Now, there's some crud in here, but not as much as I would have thought. There's the primary jets. No, I'm sorry, those are the secondary jets. Primaries are right up in here. So we'll blow those all out, make sure everything's clean, but the bowls weren't quite as bad as I thought they'd be. I thought we'd have more, more stuff in there than that. So, But we'll get her nice and clean, especially the vents, and uh, see what that does for us. I'm putting stuff back together again, and I'm just putting the last primary jet in. And just thought it was humorous that uh, this is the custom tool I use for installing jets. Just a dumb piece of wire that I ground down. I probably did this 30 years ago, and for some reason I just can't seem to put jets in without it. And I don't know if I can do this with the video going, but uh, it's always tricky to get it in that pocket, get it square to the hole. And I just do this and just drop that sucker in. And it lines right up. And then I've got my special ground down screwdriver. Put that in there. And just like that. And I don't know why. It's funny how the dumb tools you make once, suddenly you have to use it every time. So I keep that with all my jets and metering rods. And anytime I work on carburetors, that's right there with me. When I rinsed out the inside of the carb, the where the fuel is and the primary and secondary jets, I drained all that onto a paper towel and then onto newspaper. So this was a clean paper towel before I drained it. And this is all the stuff that was inside the carburetor. So this would be in the fuel bowls and the jets. So we did have quite a bit of rust and corrosion in there. So that's all cleaned out now. And we'll see if that's enough to get it to quit stalling. So we'll fire it up here in a minute. So after sitting overnight, this is how much fuel's left in the bowls. So I'm clearly 
not having an evaporation problem at least overnight we've got lots of fuel on both sides so I don't think that's my problem and I've got fuel in the accelerator pump pocket so we're gonna take that accelerator pump apart and take at least uh, the nozzle apart check the nozzle for cracks and a fresh gasket and then we will take and replace the pump I think that's uh, I got two of those I'll, I'll just grab another one and pop that on that way we'll be sure but we'll check it for function before we um, put her all back together again. Sprayed out the primary and secondary boosters and passages, and this is all the crud I got out of there. Again, this is clean paper towel. So you see we had some pretty good chunks in there. And the accelerator pump circuit. So. We've been getting a lot of trash out of this carb, so hopefully this will help her run better. Now with the carb all back together and on, tried it for a test drive, and I think my problem is just I'm not getting enough fuel up to it. So uh, with all the crud we got out of the carburetor, I'm guessing there may just be some packed in the fuel pump. So I have pulled the power steering pump away, and now I'm going to go down in here take fuel pump out and we'll just clean that and see if we get a lot of crud out of there and see if we get a little bit better fuel flow so right now it fires up if I prime the carburetor it fires up runs for a short period then dies and if I check it to see if I've got fuel coming out of the uh, squirters there's none so I'm, I'm guessing we're just running short on fuel so we'll take a look at the fuel pump and we'll go from there got the fuel pump off and cleaned it up a little bit of grease on it, but that's just normal coming off an engine. So, got it over here on the bench, and we will take it apart. Look at that, already seeing some crud coming out of there. So, we're going to take it apart and see what kind of crud we got inside, clean it up, put it back together, put her back in. Now, the diaphragm looks good, so I don't think we have any problem there. And... Let's take the valve body apart and we'll see, see what we got there. But not a lot of crud in it. Kind of surprised. Thought I'd see more than that. Okay, we found a mess. Look at all that crud in there. A lot of sediment and rust. So we're going to clean out the valves, clean out the pockets, and get all that out of there. Put her back together again, tight and right. And that should help. Okay, we're going to clean this out. So we got a lot of chunks in there, but you can see what kind of stuff we're getting out. This thing is pretty dirty, so I'm glad we took it apart. Makes me miss the old fuel pumps with the glass sediment bowls at the bottom. You could just take them off with one screw and get all this crud out of there and then put them back together, even from under the car. This is a little more labor intensive, but we'll get this. So I'm going to tidy that up and I'll show you what it looks like in just a minute. That is a lot better. So I scraped all that stuff out of there, cleaned the inlet, and just to give you an idea, this is what we got out of the inlet side of the pump. So again, a lot of rust and crud from the tank, but better to get it out now. So it's worth pulling the pump to get all that out. Now looking at the diaphragm here, the, not the diaphragm, the gasket, this is looking pretty good. Looks, looks like no tears. Sometimes these things get cracks in them. Looks pretty fresh. So we'll tidy the valves up and then we'll put her all back together. So I went to reattach the fuel line to the fuel pump and it wouldn't go on. I couldn't figure it out. And I cut a few chunks off and this is what the fuel line looks like. It is completely disintegrated. Every time I tried to push it onto the barb for the fuel pump, it just wouldn't go. So I've now gone out and bought all new fuel line. So project just got a little bit bigger. We will now tear apart 
find where that line goes and replace all of this worn out stuff. Here's another chunk of it. This is right at the end. This is where the clamp was on the fuel pump. Look at that. I'm so glad that didn't pop through that last little bit. We'd had a fuel leak. We could have had a fire. So all the rubber fuel line is coming off. I just fired it up. I cleaned out the fuel line last night, had it running. Fuel filter's looking. That's got a little bit of fuzz in it, not bad. But at idle, it can sit here and idle all day. Nice and smooth, no problem. If I take it out and drive it, I can't go more than one or two tenths of a mile. And it won't, it'll just stall. So something, and if I pull the fuel line going into the fuel filter, nothing comes out. If I burp a little air back into the tank, I hear a bubble, release that, fuel will come flowing out of the line, plug it into the fuel pump, and she runs. And that's where it's at right now. It, it runs smooth, um, no issues. So that's as far as I feel I can get it. This is the rust that I've gotten out of the tank after a day or two of flushing it. I don't know if you can really see how much that is but it's it's a lot it's a pretty big pile and that's just getting it through the fuel line imagine how much more is probably still in the tank some pretty good sized particles in there too